Hey everyone, this is Jared from PCGamer.com. I'm here today with one of the hottest multiplayer games right now, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. While it's still in early access, with over 2 million copies sold, people are constantly queuing up to take another stab at being the last man standing in this battle royale. The pre-final nature means that performance is likely to improve over time, or maybe not. Battlegrounds is far more demanding than other popular games like Overwatch and Counter-Strike. It uses Unreal Engine 4, which has a good reputation for image quality, but it also tends to require a lot of hardware. You definitely don't want to show up running on integrated graphics, and even many budget GPUs are struggling with the current release. One thing I do want to get out of the way is that I'm testing at medium and ultra quality. I know a lot of competitive players out there are running at the minimum quality settings, except maybe for view distance, and they're trying to gain a competitive advantage. I like my games to look nice, and dropping to the very low presets still only boosts performance by about 50% over medium, or about double the performance of ultra quality. Alright, let's skydive right into our entry level graphics cards. Normally, the RX 470 outperforms the GTX 1063 GB, but Battlegrounds clearly favors Nvidia's GPUs. Performance is at least reasonably consistent, though again, AMD's 470 shows a few stutters during the test sequence. If you're gunning for 60 frames per second or more, budget GPUs will need to drop to the very low preset, and even then some of them will come up short. Last generation high-end cards like the 970 and 390 do okay, but the 1050 Ti also fails to make 60 frames per second. At 1080p Ultra, most mainstream and above cards are playable, but you'll basically need a GTX 1060 or 980 or higher if you want to hit the buttery smooth 60 plus frames per second zone. Or you can just drop back to very low settings and forget about shadows, texture quality, foliage, and all that extra fluff. It's important to note that performance optimizations typically happen later in the game development process, which is kind of the opposite of early access. Notice for example that the 1080 Ti actually falls below the 1080 performance. A few months from now, things can and likely will change for the better. As you might expect given what we've seen so far, 1440p Ultra is basically the domain of high-end 10 series Nvidia cards. Only the 1080 and 1080 Ti can break 60 frames per second, and this time the 1080 Ti takes its rightful place at the top of the charts. AMD's RX Vega should be out within the month, and hopefully with drivers that tune Battlegrounds performance a bit, as the Fury X is clearly not living up to its potential. VRAM incidentally is also becoming a factor, with the 1066GB showing much more consistent frame rates than the 1063GB. Going forward, I would strongly recommend anyone buying a new graphics card that costs $200 or more should get at least 6GB of VRAM. 4K Ultra is basically beyond the reach of mere mortals right now. Even the 1080 Ti falls short of 60 frames per second. There's a darker side to the story as well since Unreal Engine 4 uses deferred rendering techniques that are incompatible with multi-GPU. I did check SLI 1080 performance and it was worse in all cases compared to a single 1080. I don't expect that to change with future updates or drivers unless someone can figure out a way to make SLI and Crossfire work with Unreal Engine. That means your best bet for 4K gaming is to drop the quality down to medium or lower, which should push the 1080 and 1080 Ti above 60 frames per second. Or you can just sit around and wait a while and the game will leave early access and hopefully performance will be optimized by then. Shifting gears over to notebook testing, the mobile CPUs aren't able to keep the GPUs fully fed with data. Clock speed matters more in Battlegrounds than core counts, so the overclocked 4.8GHz i7-7700K distances itself from the mobile 7700HQ, which tends to run at about 3.5GHz while playing Battlegrounds. Thanks to the CPU bottleneck, even the GT73 VR and its mobile GTX 1080 fall short of the desktop GTX 1070. That's not normally the case, but here we're dealing with a 20% CPU performance deficit. That wraps up my current Battlegrounds testing. I'll be sure to revisit the game once it leaves early access. In the meantime, if you happen to see me running laps around a building in Yasnaya, pop on over and say hi. Thanks to MSI for providing the notebooks, graphics cards, and desktop PC. All of the desktop results were run on MSI's Aegis Ti3, a Gundam Wing expired design that includes an overclocked i7-7700K, 64GB of RAM, and 1TB of solid state storage. We have additional performance results over at PCGamer.com, including CPU scaling with AMD Ryzen and Intel Broadwell eCPUs, so be sure to check that out. 